Coming up on Stu Does America, new allegations in the Leah Thomas swimming scandal could potentially rock the entire sport to the core. I'll talk to Bobby Burak of Outkick, who has the exclusive. Joe Biden's administration is in serious trouble, so naturally they're going to apply the Tom Hanks Band-Aid. Why not? And the world of professional athletics, uh, can it survive, honestly, when anyone can compete as any sex at any level, any time? Let's break it down as we do gender in sports. in strange times. I don't know if you've noticed that lately. Let me tell you, let's talk a little women's swimming here. And just me saying that is, proves we're in strange times. Why the hell do I care about women's swimming? Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a long story. Stay tuned for it. You've heard of Leah Thomas. She is the very female swimmer on the very female swimming team at Penn University. She was very male and on the very male swimming team before COVID. So, I mean, if you don't think COVID has had a lot of effects on our society, <laughs> just check out Leah Thomas. Let me. Uh, I first realized I was trans um, the summer before in 2018. Uh, there was a lot of uncertainty. I didn't know what I would be able to do, if I would be able to keep swimming. And so I decided to swim out the 2018, 2019 year on the men's team as a man without coming out and that caused a lot of distress to me i was struggling you know mental my mental health was not very good it was a lot of unease um about basically just feeling trapped in my body like it it didn't align i mean this is i think it's very confusing for everyone uh, maybe top of the mind, Leah Thomas. Very difficult time, and I don't wish uh, times like this on anybody. Uh, I can't imagine what it's like to go through all of the stuff that's going on right now as it relates to this. In fact, I even people who are just being interviewed about the sport now are in trouble. This is Michael Phelps, uh, who is trying his best to walk some sort of sane line on this story. My advice to everyone if you've ever been in a pool before, don't do an interview for the next six months. But here's Michael Phelps. Look, like I, I'll say, you know, I, I can talk from a standpoint of, of doping. Um, you know, I, I don't think I've competed in a clean field in my entire career. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think this leads back to the organizing committees again, um, because it has to be a level playing field. I think that's something that, that we all need. Um, because it's it, like, that's what sports are. Uh, and, and for me, um, I, I don't know where this is going to go. I don't know, um, what's going to happen. Um, I, I believe that we all should feel comfortable with who we are in our own skin. Um, but I think sports should all be played at an even playing field. I don't know what that looks like in the future. Um, but it's, 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 it's hard. Uh-oh. It, it, it's a really, it, I, honestly. <laughs> Poor guy. I, I don't know. It's what complicated. To say. Uh, it, it's very complicated, and and um, you know, this is this is my sport. This has been my sport my whole entire career. Um, and and I honestly, the one thing I would love is everybody to be able to compete on an even playing field. That's mm -hmm. all I can say. You're not allowed to say that, Michael. <laughs> just so you know, uh, just. If someone asks you about Leah Thomas and you're in the middle of an interview and you're Michael Phelps, you say, I actually don't know who you're talking about and I've never heard of swimming. That's the appropriate answer. Uh, it's bizarre. First of all, you certainly can't say uh, an even playing field because that indicates that you might have some skepticism of a guy swimming in the female swimming uh, meet. And that is apparently the wrong thing to say these days. Also, you know what the headline was after that? Um, Michael Phelps compares transgender athletes to doping was legitimately where everyone went. There's no way to win here unless you uh, go along and, um, and just endorse fully the left-wing viewpoint of America and what they're supposed to feel. And what's, what's kind of shocking about this is there is another way to win, which is just being honest, 
just telling the truth. But nobody wants to do that. That's not what they want to do. So this gets very confusing for people and organizations to deal with. Uh, and it's sad. Uh, the NCAA is trying to figure out uh, their part in this, and they've been pathetic. Um, people said, hey, you can't just let a dude swim in the women's meet. You notice that he's winning all the meets, all the races. He's setting all the records. You can't let this happen. They got pressure, so they decided to change their standard. And here's what they said. Previously, guidelines um, required transgender female athletes to have undergone one year of testosterone suppression treatment in order to compete on a women's team in any sport. And how anyone thinks that after 18 years or 19 years of growing up as a man or a boy and then turning into a man, that one year of testosterone suppression therapy is going to change you into a woman, that's not science, boy and girls and I don't I'm not going to list all 50 genders here it's boys and girls uh, now transgender student athletes competing in swimming for example will look to USA swimming for eligibility criteria USA swimming doesn't have a policy available online and is not responded to, for, to a request for comment so the NCAA punted to an organization that has no standard on the issue this is how scared everyone is look Nobody, nobody approves of people being harassed or to, made feel, to be made to feel bad, to be um, hated upon, all the things that we all reject. Nobody wants that, obviously. People should be always treated with respect and should be able to, you should be able to be treated um, like a human being and loved just like any other human being. But at the end of the day, we're talking about a sport here. And you don't get to do everything all the time. You can't swim in women's swim meets when you're a biological man. It just doesn't work. It doesn't make any sense. That doesn't mean that every biological man that ever does it is going to win every race. But Leah Thomas is, as far as I understand, just a decent swimmer as a man and is incredible as a woman. Because, you know, he's not a woman. I mean, I, like, that's just the way this is. I mean, I, I, you don't get to define who you are. I don't get to just say, if I wanted to say I was a woman on television today, it, didn't just, it wouldn't just magically come true. It's not like saying Beetlejuice three times. It doesn't just appear. You have to actually be born that way. Remember when born that way was a thing the left used to always talk about? So an additional layer onto this as it relates to the NCAA is an exclusive from OutKick where they, they're very well sourced inside the Penn swimming team and they're talking to a lot of the other swimmers, female swimmers, who are like, look, we have to tell Leah Thomas that we're excited for her, but like, this is pissing us off too. We can't win any of, the, any of the races. We're just getting blown away every single time. We talked to you about last week about a story where Leah Thomas lost a race and it was thrown around by the mainstream media as if it was this proving their point. Oh my gosh, see, she can lose a race. Leah Thomas lost and it proves our point. Of course, Leah Thomas won two other races at the same meet. They didn't really acknowledge that. But now, OutKick has this exclusive that a Penn swimmer, another person on the team, says that Leah Thomas colluded with a fellow transgender swimmer before the race. So Leah Thomas was beaten by another transgender swimmer in this race. They apparently were talking beforehand. They're friends. And the allegation is Leah Thomas wasn't really trying. Now, you might say, how do you know? And it is just an allegation. But... Uh, Leah Thomas finished three seconds behind her, almost four seconds behind her normal time. And it's a race, you know, that takes four, 50 seconds to race. So it's a lot of time. Uh, you're not usually going to fall. You know, I mean, I guess it's possible you could just have a terrible race, but it does not seem likely. And onlookers said it didn't look like she was trying really hard. Uh, that was not the normal Leah Thomas we expect to see in the pool. So all of this is going on. And it's interesting because the, there's a subtle allegation below the fold here. The left is saying something about conservatives when this debate goes on. Conservatives say, look, we want women's sports to be able to be competitive. We want women to be able to, uh, you know, our, our, our daughters to be able to grow up and you know, participate in sports competing against other girls so that they can see where they stand and have a fair shot. And liberals say, wait a minute, we know you guys, we are conservatives, and the real story here is you just hate your haters, you don't like people that are different than you, and the real story is, it's not about you caring about women's sports, what, it matter, what matters to you is you punish people who are different. If they're LGBTQ to IA plus plus four nine three, if you're in that group, well then you shouldn't be able to do things that are fun because we hate you so much and you're so different. That's the allegation. 
And you wonder, is that true? I mean, basically all they're doing, there's no way to disprove it, right? They're just guessing at our inner hidden feelings. And there's no way to disprove it, is there? Well, let me give you, let me give a shot at it here real quick. If it's true that we just don't want people who are different to compete in athletic events, why aren't we talking about the Olympics? The Olympics are coming up here in a few weeks in China. Well, we're talking about that part of the Olympics quite a bit. Maybe that we shouldn't be in China. But in figure skating, there is a, uh, uh, in the couples skate, there is a wonderful couple uh, who are apparently uh, very, very uh, wonderful skaters. And we ha- it's a guy and a girl. That's how it's usually paired up. However, this year it's different. This year there is a, a girl and a non-binary person a non-binary person who's referred to as they. So you get, you get incredibly informative uh, paragraphs like this. His name is uh, Timothy LaDuke. Uh, Timothy LaDuke, 31, became the first openly gay athlete to win a gold at the U.S. Pairs event in 2019. And this year, the first publicly out non-binary athlete to win the U.S. championship event in any discipline. Next month, they will become the first publicly out binary athlete to compete at the Winter Olympics. So when I say they... I'm not referring to the couple. I'm referring to just him. Next month, they will become the first publicly out non-binary athlete, singular, to compete at the Winter Olympics. This is just bad grammar is what it is. But this is a real story going on. And it's a big story, right? The first non-binary Olympic athlete. It's a big deal. Why aren't conservatives talking about it? Well, they're not talking about it because it doesn't affect the actual competition. Conservatives don't care if someone who calls himself non-binary goes to the Olympics because this person was born a male and is competing in the role a male would play. The fact that he calls himself non-binary makes no difference. The fact that he is gay makes no difference. It's not material to what's going on. So no conservatives are complaining about it. We don't care if someone who is different might be winning a gold medal and having fun. We don't hate. We don't care about that. What we care about is to be fair to the other people. And this is the situation here. The, the, the whole competition is thrown off uh, with Leah Thomas, with uh, Timothy LaDuke. It's not. So no one's talking about it. And it sort of disproves the entire narrative of the left. What's interesting here, as we also saw this week, I think a, a, a bigger part of this entire arc go on. It's not just about sports. It's bigger than that. It's about stating the truth being confident in looking at something and knowing what the truth is and then admitting that you know. And this is the most important part of this. It's not that the left doesn't know what we're talking about. They just won't admit that they know. Let me give you this. This is, uh, this is Matt Walsh. Matt Walsh went on um, uh, Dr. Phil, and he was talking to apparently a couple of transgendered uh, advocates, and they're going back and forth about What is a woman? What is a transgender person? Who is a woman? Who is a man? I want you to watch this clip. Let this soak in, and then we'll discuss. That's a question I would like to throw out to other members of the panel, actually, because just like the four-year-old can't answer what is a girl, well, this is one of the problems with this left-wing gender ideology, is that no one who espouses it can even tell you what these words mean. It's like, what is a woman? Can you tell me what a woman is? No, I can't. Because but, it's not for me to say. I, womanhood looks different for everybody. What do, you, what do you define a woman as? An adult human female. And what does a female mean? Uh, what, well, that's how, do you, how do you define a female? Someone with, with female reproductive organs. Okay. Someone who's, you know, here's the thing. When you're, when you're female, it goes right down to your bones, your DNA. So that's why if someone dies, okay. we could dig up their bones 100 years from now. We have no idea what they believed in their head, but we can tell what sex they were okay. because it's, in, it's, down in, it's, it's in, ingrained in every fiber of their being. Interesting. So I'm trying to understand. Your definition is that a woman is someone who is female, you said, right? Correct. Gotcha. Is okay. a biological female. So what happens if we have maybe someone who is female, identifies as a woman, right? You know, cisgender woman, right? As you explained, as you just explained, it maybe doesn't have the ability to reproduce. Maybe it doesn't have those organs that you're talking about that are reproductive organs. I have answered the question. You stood up here and said trans women are women. Yes. Tell me what you mean. What is a woman? Womanhood is something that, just as Ethan explained, I cannot define because I am not myself. But you used the word. So what did you mean when you said trans women are women if you don't know what it means? Right. So here's the thing. So I do not define what a woman is because I do not identify as a woman. Womanhood 
is something that is an umbrella term. It includes people that who- That describes what? People who identify as a woman. I identify as what? As a woman. What is that? Was to each their own. Okay. Each woman, each man, each person is going to have a different relation with their own gender identity and define it differently. That doesn't, and so I'm trans women are women too. Clap! Time to clap! And you want to hold on. Trans you women are women. Reduce, you what, listen, you won't listen, even tell me you what you the word reduce, means, though. So that's the problem. You want to reduce women. You want to reduce men down to maybe just their genetics, our genitals, no. our chromosomes, right? That's what you're what saying. You is is that's a, what, what, what you want to do is what you want to do is appropriate women. You want to appropriate womanhood. Okay. And turn it into basically a costume that could be worn. It's one of the most amazing clips I've ever seen in my life. You can't use words that you don't know what they mean, right? Like, I, I don't... <laughs> now, look, Matt Walsh, and we've had Matt on the show a, a bunch of times, he likes to get in the fight. He likes to mix it up. And he's being very respectful there and just using logic. But, like, Matt is not a guy who... He doesn't, he's not trying to please the left and, uh, with the way he's talking. He's... he's stating what he believes and he's not going to back down from it he's not you know like arthur brooks is a good example of a guy who is really smart and he is doing a lot of outreach to both sides he tries to sell the left on capitalism and does so very very successfully um where matt is just like he's like i'm just going to say exactly what i think i don't care if you agree with me i'm going to say what the truth is um so all of this to say is that like even though matt isn't always the most cuddly creature uh, as as uh, some might say uh, might accuse him of uh Everyone in that audience, despite the fact that they clapped at the other side in the, in the bumper sticker nonsense that was coming out of, out of their mouths, everyone at their, at their core understands that he's right. If you can't define what a word means, how can you even use it? If I were to say, well, you know what? Uh, I will tell you this. You better get your glibble globble straight. And you say, well, what do you mean by glibble globble? I can't tell you what your glibble globble is. You need to know what it is. In fact, I don't per particularly have a glibble globble, so I can't tell you what it is. Well, this is not, uh, humans can't com live in an environment where words don't mean anything. You can't communicate if a word doesn't mean something. And their accusation that only a woman, someone who identifies as a woman, can identify what womanhood is, is completely insane. Because Matt is clearly a man, and Matt then, by that definition, can define what a man is, but they would tell him he was wrong if he defined a man as a biological male. None of this makes sense, uh, and, it, and it won't make sense for a long time. And we're at this part of our whole human existence where the 2 plus 2 equals 5 thing is absolutely in play. Are you telling me that we will not in the next few years have a math teacher explaining why 2 plus 2 is 5 and it should be that way? We've certainly seen some of this in our education system already. Everyone out there understands this. It's not just you. It's not just you as a conservative who say, wait a minute, like a biological male, we know what a man is. It's a biological male. If they want to identify, they want to say they feel a certain way. I remember Ellen defining a transgender person or, or a gender as uh, it's a feeling you have in your head. And that feeling you have in your head may be material to you. It may be material to uh, the things that you do, the culture that surrounds you, the friends that you make, the circle you live in. But it's not material to a doctor who needs to figure out how to cure your, your, your very female uh, ovarian cancer when you're saying you're a dude. We, everyone watching this knows what the truth is. And they're actually afraid to say it. They're afraid to admit it. How can you operate a civilization when these are the rules. I will argue that if we don't understand that those rules are not rules that will allow civilization to continue, we're going to have a real tough time communicating with one another. And that leads to really bad things. We have to be able to agree on basic truths. And there we are. This is a big challenge from the left, from postmodernism, uh, from all of the things we've been talking about for, God, over a decade now. The bottom line is truth is truth. Not only are you required to recognize it, but you're also required to say it. Well, we do live in a culture of increasing sources of misinformation. Uh, so it's important that 
if you're raising kids, and I've got a couple, uh, you know, eight and nine, or nine, geez, nine and 10 years old now, they're getting older and older every day. That's apparently how it works with age. Um, inquisitive children are really something that you want to encourage. Uh, you have, a, a, you know, if you, if you have kids that don't question what is around them and don't have inquisitive minds, they're gonna struggle in a world like this. It's true. Annie's Genius Box is an excellent way to encourage your kids' curiosity while providing fun activities that are entertaining as they are educational. We're talking about like fun science stuff. I mean, like I've got a couple of kids who love science, who like um, you know fun like little experiments and stuff, and and this is why this stuff is perfect for them. Uh, Annie's uh, has they have these um, STEM theme boxes, basically geology, chemistry, aerodynamics, all these cool topics, and they get a Genius Box delivered. It's ages seven to twelve. Um, and basically, this can empower your kids' imagination, uh, critical thinking. They get a top secret mission envelope. It's like a, it's a fun game, and they're learning about real science and things that are actually true. Go to annieskitclubs.com slash stew. Save 50% off your first box. It's annieskitclubs.com slash stew. Use the uh, slash stew part of the address because that's how they know you like this stupid show. Plus, you'll be able to get all these cool uh, boxes for your kids. It's annieskitclubs.com slash stew. Annieskitclubs.com slash stew. I'm so happy to welcome Bobby Burak back to the program. He's a columnist for OutKick. Their new exclusive is Penn Swimmer alleges Leah Thomas colluded with fellow transgender swimmer before race, which is an absolute must read and a bizarre one. I'll tweet out a link to it uh, shortly. Bobby, how's it going? Hey, Stu, what's going on? Hey, I just want to let your listeners know I've had this new look going on where I've been wearing a suit jacket above a plain black or white or gray t shirt. Mm -hmm. But I got all my clothes laid up today. And when I heard I was coming on this show, I had to immediately change because <laughs> nobody dresses better on TV or in media than you that always dark black suit, black tie, white undershirt, you really make it hard for guests to compete. So I just want to let you know that you're making it harder for people because I got to spend an extra 5, 10, 15 minutes just trying to compete with your suit. Well, I appreciate that. I'm known for my fashion sense, Bobby. I mean, that's what the show has been known for all these years. So I do appreciate you noticing. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that, that is the brand of the show. So I just want to, you know, make sure the listeners or li uh, <laughs> viewers know that I'm not just coming on here off the streets. I prepare for this look. I appreciate it. For the podcasters, <laughs> he looks adorable. Uh, I promise you. Um, you so, Bobby, uh, let me get into uh, your out the uh, Leah Thomas thing, which I th find is fascinating. Uh, Outkick is incredibly well sourced within the Penn women's swimming team. <laughs> like There's like, you guys, I don't know how many different swimmers you are in contact with, but you're constantly breaking news about the their comments about what's going on with Leah Thomas, and a lot of them don't seem very happy. Yeah, I mean, Stu, I think part of the reason why I, they're coming out kick is because these female, biological female swimmers, they have nowhere else to turn to. I mean, ESPN has not mentioned this story. The Ringer, CBS Sports, NBC Sports, ABC News, none of these outlets will address this story. They're afraid to take this story head on. And we've talked to a lot of these women on the team saying, hey, we feel silenced, voiceless, and helpless. That They feel like opportunities are being taken away from them by Penn University, by the Ivy League, by NCAA, and there's no one to turn to. So I think it's really important that somebody gives them a voice because they're the ones that are really being impacted by this. I thought the most eye-opening quote that we got so far is one of uh, Leah Thomas's swimmers saying, you know, if I have kids one day, I hope I have a daughter or I hope I have a son because if I have a daughter, I don't think she'll be able to play sports because of biological men like Leah Thomas taking those opportunities away from them. I mean, that's a major story. And for so many outlets, particularly sports outlets, to just ignore that, to act like this is just normal, that's pretty absurd and also troubling. Yeah, and the story, uh, one of the latest uh, stories that's come out about this is this one meet. We talked about it when it happened where – Leah Thomas actually lost a race, and I, 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 it was without fail. Everybody I saw mention this on the left or in the mainstream media said, see, this proves it. Uh, it's, right. it's totally fine for her to be swimming, uh, for Leah Thomas to be swimming on the female team. And then the, the breakdown here is it looks like they talked about it, the two swimmers that finished first and second, talked about it beforehand. Uh, Leah Thomas mysteriously was like four or five seconds behind her normal time in a, a race that only takes like a minute. Uh, and it seems like at least this multiple people said watching it, you can tell she wasn't going all out here. I mean, this this should be a major 
NCAA scandal, not from even the perspective of, you know, trans sports, from the perspective of competition. They should care if two people on opposite teams are throwing races. This should be a major concern for the NCAA. Of course. And uh, moreover, this woman that beat Leah Thomas, which everybody proved, said was validation that a female swimmer can beat a male swimmer, which based on a lot of evidence they can't. Um, this is a friend of Leah Thomas's, so there's a connection there yeah. behind the scenes that they know they were talking beforehand. And you just mentioned it. If if the NCAA or any sports league, professional, collegiate, if they even got a whiff of somebody possibly colluding with an opponent to lose, to throw a race, it would be a top investigation. You hear so much about, well, with all this legalization, and gamble and maybe some pitcher is going to throw the game. I mean, we have a lot of evidence right here that a swimmer threw a competition to prove a point to help further validate why transgenders should be able to compete in whatever um, sport they want to, meaning whatever gender sport. Yeah, I think that's a, the NCAA is the one doing nothing because they haven't even released a statement saying they're looking into this. They're pretty much just acting like the story's not out there. And if it is, they don't care at all because they haven't addressed it despite numerous requests for comments. I mean, how is there not at least an investigation to look into it? I mean, they might accuse you guys of making up the quote, not having a source, whatever they want to do. I, don't, I know that's not true, but still, they might accuse right. you of that. You'd think they'd at least talk to the other swimmers to see if they could find out if it was true. They don't even seem to be interested in that. And this is now spreading like all over the place. Uh, it, 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 look, I, if I were Michael Phelps, I would never do another interview because he's just going to be asked about this every single time. Right. But he was asked about... Uh, whether, you know, wh wh how should this play out? How should trans, uh, w you know, men that are transitioning to women, should they be allowed to be in women's sports? And he basically said, look, I want an, e an even playing field. Uh, even that's too much. I mean, I feel I felt like I was watching him get, get be infected with pre-cancellation syndrome as I was watching the interview. He's not going to be able to last through this. Yeah, and, and you go back to why these colleges and the NCAA are not looking into this everybody's afraid Stu, because it's become a new thing i mean if you come out against any sort of you know transgender or somebody's decision you're not only going to get canceled you're going to get punished and probably never get another opportunity again so whether it's phelps or any other swimmer they're afraid to speak up on this and i found phelps phelps's um uh, comment pretty interesting because he talks about even playing field. But I think you're right. And um, Bruce or uh, Caitlyn Jenner spoke about this a couple of days ago. She's saying, well, if transgenders, they can have their own league, right? When they're taking over female sports, that's almost like a heavyweight boxer going against a featherweight. It's obviously not an even playing field. So them trying to figure out ways to normalize this, it's never going to work because you can't normalize something that's not even the whole point of normalizing sports is making everybody on equal playing field it's never going to happen because a biological male is always going to have an advantage over a biological female so there's nothing they can do to sort of ease that gap except separate them in, a, in their own transgender league which they'll never do so i think this problem is only going to keep on growing and it's as far as some like Michael Phelps, he's never going to have to speak about any of his past troubles again because this is the only topic people are going to want to hear him speak about. Yeah, it really, it really is fascinating. It's fascinating how fast it goes from everybody agrees that it's completely insane to, I don't know, maybe we should allow it, to you're hateful if you don't fully endorse right. it. it like, it's like it happens within like three months. I don't know how this goes on. Um, we're kind of seeing this now in the world uh, of tennis with Novak Djokovic who, you know, again, I think people would have thought it was insane that if a person didn't want to get a particular shot or treatment, they wouldn't be allowed to play in a, in a tennis tournament or even allowed into the country. They told him initially he was going to be able to play in the tournament in the Australian Open. Then they had a bunch of back and forth in the courts. Eventually, he's deported out of the country. It now looks like he might not be able to play in the French Open. And I'll be surprised if they allow him in the U.S. for the U.S. Open either or Wimbledon. I mean, this guy may never play in another Grand Slam based on a medical decision. Yeah, I mean, if they listen to Howard Stern... This guy might be arrested. I don't know if you saw that clip, but Howard Stern last week, he demanded that every tennis organization ban this guy forever, even if he gets the vaccine going forward, just punish him so far for not getting it. Yeah, I fully expect, whether it be Wimbledon, the U.S. Open, to do the same thing, pretty much say, hey, the precedent's been set. If you don't want to get the vaccine, you're not playing. 
And you got to give Novak some credit because he doesn't have any supporters in the media or, or fellow athletes. Everybody's coming down this guy, and he's not budging. He's pretty much saying, I chose not to get vaccinated. I feel like it's the best health decision. I consulted with my doctors. And he's not bowing down, Stu. And you got to give a guy a lot of credit because athletes are some of the weakest people. When pressure comes their way, they crumble and obey quickly. The fact that you have Novak Djokovic, Aaron Rodgers, and Kyrie Irving pretty much just saying, hey, hey we're not going to let these heathens bully us into getting a vaccine that we don't think is of our best interest. That's something that you haven't seen a lot in sports, seeing athletes stand up for themselves, go in the other direction against the in crowds. So yeah. I give those three a lot of credit. I mean, it's a lot of pressure. And, and you know, look, they, they deserve to be able to make their own decisions on this stuff. What's fascinating with Djokovic in particular is that part of the complaint about Djokovic is that he was going out in public when he tested positive in December for coronavirus. Well, that would make him, I don't even think he would be eligible to get the vaccine this quickly after being infected. Obviously, he's not going to get COVID again that quickly, or at least there's no evidence to, to believe that he would. So he's in a window here where he's as safe as he can possibly be, and yet they still won't even let him inside the country. It's, it's just completely insane. Oh, well, I mean, that's how dumb some of these people covering sports are. When Aaron Rodgers returned from his positive test, they're like, this guy's a big threat. Um, he just had COVID. He recovered. He's not a threat to anybody on the field. There's literally no evidence that I mean, he's one of the safest guys on the field because he had just recovered from COVID and had natural immunity. So it's so irresponsible that you have people out there saying this stuff. I mean, I'm all for giving everybody an opinion, but I don't think these networks should allow – these sports pundits to just really spread lies about COVID and vaccine because they don't know anything about it. Just watch some of these people talk about it. Like they were saying earlier this year that like the chances of a vaccinated player testing positive are slim to none. All of a sudden, two weeks later, rosters of vaccinated players were ineligible because they all tested positive. So they just don't know what they're talking about. So I think giving these guys a platform, they're just spreading lies. I don't know if they don't know anything, they don't want to know anything, or they're just trying to appease their bosses. But all this information about COVID coming from sports pundits, it's all been proven false so far. I know. It's, it's very it's, frustrating. We're, yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> we're kind of in the same boat here, Bobby. We both love sports and we both talk about politics and culture a lot. Yeah. And it's like you realize as a, you know, as a person who was on the air every day talking about politics, whenever I hear the typical sports pundit try to worm their way through these issues, you could tell they've never thought about any of them before. Uh, and it, it's just embarrassing. It's embarrassing to watch it happen. I just cringe oh, every yeah. time. Uh, every time some sports announcer starts talking about some important issue, I start cringing. Um, before we let you go here, Bobby, I want to I want to hit the Golden State Warriors thing. Uh, the, you know, I guess yeah. co-owner or investor in the Warriors who came out and just kind of said the quiet part out loud. It's the same thing LeBron has been saying for quite a long time uh, without admitting it. They don't give a crap about the Uyghurs. They don't care if a million Muslims no. are behind bars in prison camps. They don't care we're, They don't care for a second about it because their money's on the line, their power's on the line, and screw those, those, those little people in a foreign land. Yes, yeah, dude, I don't know what makes me more frustrated, the fact that most outlets refuse to cover this story as well. Um, a media transcript company said that ESPN has mentioned this story a grand told of zero times this week Jeez. or the ones that did write this up and their headline is so misleading they just say you know he doesn't care about a group of chinese citizens um what he said is he doesn't care about genocide the u.s state department declared what the ccp is doing to this the muslim uyghurs as genocide these guys are modern day nazis i just interviewed morgan ortegas who worked for mike pompeo when he declared these acts genocide. I mean, she was talking about some of the things they do. Um, yeah, th these are not these are modern day Nazis. So the headline should be Warriors owner says he doesn't care that there's Nazis in China as long as he's making money. I mean, that's the accurate headline. I mean, that's a monstrous statement. I mean, this guy is a creep. This guy's a monster. And he's clearly someone who I don't think should have a platform to talk about anything because he, he got frustrated when people try to challenge him on it. He's like, wait, you guys care about it? Why are you asking me? I mean, this is a guy clearly not responsible enough to represent anybody. I mean, Stu, again, I am all for everybody having a voice. But if you're that dumb, I just don't think you should have one because I don't see what good it does. I and mean, I thought it was embarrassing for everybody. I mean, again, what they're doing to these Uyghurs in concentration campus, forced abortion, forced sterilization, is some of the sickest stuff that we have going on in the entire world. And for him to act like, well, that doesn't matter to us. We're making a lot of money. They say 
same group of owners was okay with concentration camps in China making cotton for the NBA players to sell sneakers. So you don't only only have to follow the money. You just got to follow the motives here. I mean, I find this to be really eye opening. And um, again, nobody really wants to talk about this because I don't think I think what the owner said is what most of the NBA players pretty much all agree with. They don't care at all. Mm, that's it's sad. You nailed it, though, Bobby. Uh, Bobby Burak, uh, he's a columnist for Outkick. Uh, you can head to uh, head to my Twitter now uh, and check out their new exclusive. A uh, pen swimmer alleges Leah Thomas colluded with fellow transgender swimmer before race. An amazing story. And make sure to follow Bobby on Twitter as well. Bobby, thanks so much for coming on the program. Hey, thanks, dude. Talk soon. Not everyone has uh, is at the peak of athletic competition like I am. I understand you might not be in perfect physical condition, okay? You might need, I don't know, to eat something more healthy. I, of course, am on a zero-fat diet, and I have like 800 calories a day, but that might not be you. You might need Built Bars. Built Bars are here to save the day. They've got so many flavors. Uh, we're talking about you know, coconut, mint brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel, cookies and cream, and so many more. They have a mixed box where you can uh, you get two of each of the uh, of their nine regular flavors. But they always have new flavors coming out. There's there's always something crazy they're trying. I love these guys because they just let us try it. Uh, they, they had some crazy flavor concoction came to them in a dream. It's out in like a week. It's amazing. Uh, less than 180 calories for all these things, 18 grams of protein, and it's not like a protein bar. You're going to love the taste. They're amazing. Go to built.com now. Get some. Get some for yourself. Promo code is Stu15. Save 15% off your first order. The promo code is Stu15 for 15% off at built.com. Democrats are now trying to salvage the Build Back Better agenda uh, of Joe Biden after they've realized the big thing is going to obviously fail. The voting rights, vo- voting rights situation is obviously going to fail as well. So they're trying to figure out something they can do to uh, to use this uh, reconciliation attempt. The reconciliation thing is basically they have one chance here to pass something with only 50 votes in the Senate. They only have 50 votes. They couldn't get the giant $3.5 trillion thing through. They couldn't get the $2 trillion thing through. So now they're like, well, what can we do? And there's a big piece in the New York Times today arguing, hey, like you guys are going to obviously lose in 2022 uh, in the midterms, and you're not going to have a chance to pass anything. So you better pass something now. They're arguing basically get something done with the climate right now. Like just get it done. Get as much done as you can. Deal with the fact you didn't get the whole thing. Move the ball down the road. Now, of course, this is the progressive way. Basically, you go for this big, this big moonshot. You might not get that, but you move the ball down the road a little bit. Um, I'm really mixing metaphors there, aren't I? Yeah, <laughs> move, move the ball down the field a little bit. Um, so, uh, and that's the argument. And I think like you see like Republicans do a version of this. They did their version of this in, in the Trump administration. Like my end goal is not the tax plan the Trump administration passed. I mean, it was, you know, it was, it was okay. I mean, it lower taxes a little bit, maybe a little bit on businesses. It was somewhat impactful. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't like a goal. The problem with Republicans is they start with their fallback plan. <laughs> so at least, at least the Democrats go for the stuff that they want. Republicans, though, decided we're not going to get a flat tax through right now. We're not going to get any of that stuff through. Um, whether they even want that stuff through at times, you have to wonder. But they were never going to get some huge tax cut done, so they took what they could get. That's the argument now with Democrats. They're trying to figure out, should we just take what we can get? Um, also, um, and this goes to, uh, let me give you this from Nate Cohn. He's a, uh, um, a, a, a guy from the New York Times. He basically says Biden was supposed to be, the, uh, to be FDR. Instead, he's following the playbook of the last half century of politically unsuccessful Democratic presidencies, from LBJ to Clinton to Obama. The result, only 33% say he's focused on the issues they care about. Um, I'm not surprised by the replies to this. It's a tweet. But I'll leave this for you to mull. The last three Democratic presidents came into office, pushed big transformative legislative initiatives, found themselves at 45% approval after a year. There may be a political problem with this strategy. It's true. There may be something there. Let me take a break. We'll come back on the other side. Are you trying to buy or sell a home right now? If you are, you realize buying not as easy as selling right now. The market is still up at historic levels. 
And so if you're selling a home right now, you're probably doing pretty well. If you're buying a home, you're at risk to overpay for something that might not be worth it. You need a real estate agent who can look at the situation you are in, your specific situation, and give you a sober outlook as to what is coming uh, in the future, and what you should do right now. Realestateagentsitrust.com is Glenn's company. He's been uh, dealing, he, I think he t- told me today, it's nine years old, which seems impossible. I remember him having these conversations about starting this uh, little company. Now it's a big deal. A lot of people are going there. Fans of Glenn and people who aren't, don't even know Glenn has anything to do with it. It's realestateagentsitrust.com. People just know that this is where you go to get the best real estate agent in your area. It's realestateagentsitrust.com, realestateagentsitrust.com. If only we're brave enough. Brave enough to live through two of the most difficult years many of us can remember. Brave enough to pull ourselves up again and again. America is the home of the brave. It's why we keep getting up, no matter how many times we get knocked down. Like with our economy. It isn't all the way back, but it's getting stronger. We may be entering year three of a pandemic none of us wanted or expected, but we're moving. Pretty interesting uh, moment. You can kind of describe it as a moment of, holy crap, we are screwed. Where's Tom Hanks? Maybe he can help us. Uh, Biden knows this isn't going well, just like you know this isn't going well. And Biden is trying to now use a little bit of the, uh, the credibility of Tom Hanks to push their little message. And what's amazing here is that, of course, the Simpsons predicted this like they've predicted everything else that has happened in our society over the past couple of decades. This is a clip from the Simpsons movie. Hello, I'm Tom Hanks. The U.S. government has lost its credibility, so it's borrowing some of mine. <laughs> it's true. He goes on to, uh, to describe the, uh, the new Grand Canyon, a giant hole in the ground where Springfield used to be. And definitely not Springfield. We just happened... We didn't blow up Springfield to make the canyon. We just wanted you to have a new Grand Canyon. Trust me, I'm Tom Hanks. That's about as plausible as his pitch for Joe Biden. That, I promise you. You go subscribe, rate, review, all the things. Five stars is the appropriate number of stars. If you're on, uh, I don't know, Apple Podcasts or whatever, we really appreciate your reviews. Help us go up the charts a little bit. We always uh, thank you for that. And make sure, even if you just watch on YouTube, go subscribe to the podcast anyway. It helps us. Even if you don't listen to the podcast, I don't care. If you rate, just, you know, even if you don't like the show, just five stars. It's great. Whatever in your review. I don't care. Just anything that will help us, whether you mean it or not. I mean, we, we, it doesn't matter if it comes from your soul or not. Also, you can watch the show on YouTube. Subscribe there and click the little bell as well to be alerted. And you can comment live during the show. This one from Jimmy. I'm sure they prepared Biden for hours for this news conference, and it was still a disaster. What will happen when we have a national emergency and he has to act immediately? Good God. I honestly don't think he can handle it. Uh, I, you're 100% right on that. Uh, Brian says, and an AOC plus, 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 plus to you, Stu, for such a great show. We appreciate that. Uh, spill the beans, Stu. What car did you buy? Uh, I'll tell you what car I bought. I bought nothing. Nothing. I ordered a car five months ago. Is the car here? No. Will the car ever arrive? No. Eventually, I'll go on, like, uh, Wish, and I'll order a car from China, and it'll come in a tiny box, and that will be the end of the story. But as of right now, I have nothing. So there's no nothing to apparently report. Uh, this one comes in. Uh, let us know. Did you get 20 bucks for the book? Talked about that a little bit yesterday. Just, uh, just saying. Just, you know. I don't know what you're talking about, actually. But uh, I will say, if you've got any copies of your book and uh, you want to enter into a little business arrangement, let's talk. We'll talk offline. Go to stewdoesmerch.com. Get your uh, LeBron uh, stuff. Your Colin Kaepernick stuff is all there. Don't be an idiot. Don't be a LeBron. Go to stewdoesmerch.com. We'll see you Monday.